Hey, how you doing? Uh, we're going to make some salsa and hot sauce. Uh, I've been making this for about, I don't know, uh, two years, maybe maybe three years. Uh, we're going to show you the peppers that we're going to use and get started. So these are habaneros, as soon as it'll focus. These are the sweet ones because they're yellow or orange. And here, we'll just go to these. These are the habaneros right there. So it's probably like 15, maybe, habaneros. And then these are scorpions, Trinidad scorpion peppers. And we probably got with what I had on a cutting board. And I probably got two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, yeah, about a dozen. And then these bad boys right here, these are ghost peppers. And they're pretty they're they're pretty good. They're definitely fresh and super, super red. And then over here we probably got like maybe forty yeah, forty cloves of garlic. Yeah, around about forty cloves. And of course, you need gloves whenever you're making or cutting or dealing with hot peppers, because they are hot and they like to stick to your, your skin and your fingers. So the oil from that will definitely stick to you. So you need gloves preparing any kind of hot peppers, like these ghost peppers, or especially Trinidad scorpions, and even habaneros, because if you touch your face or you know, you're going to be crying like you just got pepper sprayed. So let's cut up all this stuff and mix it up and see how it is. And we're going to fix the camera, turn around so you can see the cutting board. Just got to adjust this a little bit. Uh -uh. There you go. Let's move that bowl out of the way. So, of course, we're going to start with the garlic. You don't really need gloves for the garlic, but you want to cut it up almost to a dice, but not really a dice. But you want to cut it up as small as, and as thin as possible. And see, it's a cold press salsa and sauce. So it'll ferment and in refrigeration in a jar for about two months and uh, yeah I don't pickle it I don't use any water don't use any salt no vinegar yeah, it just ferments with garlic and the peppers that I just showed you and we're gonna cut up all yeah, it's probably like 60 cloves of garlic right here. Now I use a lot of garlic in the salsa because you know, I like garlic. I'm not going to lie to you, I love garlic. But, you know, with the peppers and stuff, it makes it, it uh, more flavorful whenever you're eating it as a salsa or a sandwich, sandwich spread or, uh, you know, after a while, uh, you could take the sauce out of it or you could put it in a bowl, take the whole jar, dump it in a bowl, and mix it, and it'd be like a thick sauce. So you could uh, make some chicken wings and put, you know, put that sauce on your chicken. Or even you know, you sauteing something, you could you know throw it in the saute. But it's not just like, oh my god, this is hot. It's you know flavored because all the garlic. Now you gotta use the right peppers too, you know. I, uh, like to go to the farmer's market and uh, get fresh hot peppers and fresh garlic. And oh yeah, by the way, this is uh, Italian purple garlic. Yeah, we got a lot to cut up here. Yeah, it's definitely like 60 cloves of garlic, easy. Maybe more. And we're only gonna make two jars of this right now. So we just gotta cut up all this stuff as fine as possible. So I don't know what, uh, I don't like to use store-bought garlic, unless it was like grown in Tennessee or something like that, you get a two-pack, but you know, the majority of times I don't like buying it because it's not grown anywhere around here, 
and I like to support local farms. Same thing with the peppers. I don't like to buy store pot peppers either. I like to go to the farmer's market or go directly to, you know, a farm and get as many peppers as I possibly can. Uh, yeah, I mean, the farmers don't have, you know, fresh store, you know, fresh uh, peppers year round, you know what I mean, any local because the growing seasons, of course, you know what I mean. But, you know, if you get it during the season and you can make this, it'll last. It'll take two months for it to ferment before you can even really use it. I mean, you can use it from the gate, but you should let it ferment and let the oil from the garlic and from the peppers mix and, you know, counteract with each other that way, or interact, I'm sorry, interact with each other. That way you get a, a better flavor and a, a better taste. So if you mix all this stuff up, yeah, I'm going to talk a lot too, you know what I mean, while you're seeing me cut this up, but if you uh, cut all this stuff up, mix it all up, and use it fresh, it's good, you know, uh, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just whenever you mix it up at first in the first like 24 hours, the uh, 24 to 48 hours, it is only as hot as uh, the mildest pepper that you use to put in it, which in this case will be the habaneros, the sweet hot habaneros. Okay, and they're sweet and hot because they're orange. Like these, these babies right here. But if you let it ferment for like two or three months, this one right here, this is the Trinidad Scorpion. The whole sauce will be hotter than it because, uh, don't get me started with the science stuff. So here's my disclaimer. Uh, this is only how I, what I think and uh, what I experienced myself. There's no science behind this and if there is, Please link it to this video because I haven't found it and you know, I just started doing this because two things that I really like garlic and hot peppers goes with you know something else I really like which is food and eating <laughs> so yeah just gotta you know what I mean I just started doing it and be like yeah this is good and let me do this and let me do that and no, I guess it's the cook in me, you know what I mean? I did do, I did work in a couple restaurants for a few years. Uh, so I was a cook for a living for a little while. But that has nothing to do with this because I always ate. <laughs> but yeah, if you're ever doing this, please be careful, you know, using a knife. Uh, like I said, I have been worked in a restaurant. Uh, I worked in 10 restaurants for 14 years, so this, you know, I, I'm very experienced with knives and uh, different ways of cutting stuff. So if you can see, like my hand is like this and the knife is like this, that way whenever I'm coming down, it's not going to cut me. If I go on an angle, then it's different, but I'm going straight down as you can see as I'm cutting and my fingers are like this holding this. Like that, and then here you can see. Yeah. You see it? So there's almost no way that I can cut myself. But regardless, it still takes experience to be able to cut this fast. So please be careful if you're doing this. And if you're not experienced, I would not suggest you do this at all. Just uh, have somebody else cut it up. So yeah, uh, I cooked for 14 years. I made my own saw, hot sauce before, uh, but you know it was super, super, super hot, and it was good, but it was super, 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 super hot. It was more hot than flavor, uh, and I like a lot of heat, but I like flavor, so I try to make sure that you know we're putting some flavor in here, and that's why you know as I told you earlier, this is Italian purple garlic, and that is why we are using the Italian purple. There's probably like two or three hundred different types of garlic. Uh, I have a garlic lady from Beaver County that I get all my garlic from. And she probably has like 25, 30 different strands of garlic, uh, including black garlic, which is really good. Well, that would be in another video that I do. But uh, this garlic is the 
hottest I, uh, we could say. Uh, it's like the spiciest. So when you're looking with garlic and you're done with garlic, the spicier the garlic, the more healthy it is to eat. Uh, you eat it raw and you have a lot of health benefits. If uh, you cook with it, it's good, but it, you're losing at least 60% to 75% of the benefits once you heat it up quickly. You might see me use like a couple different methods of cutting this, which is good, you know what I mean? Because cutting so much stuff up, you know what I mean? The same way you get blisters and stuff on your on your fingers, experienced or not, it you know it happens. But yeah, just make sure you wash your hands, like you know I already did, but still make sure you wash your hands before you start. Give yourself some time too because killing all this garlic, it took about a half hour, you know, and I didn't want to sit here and, you know, I'm going to sit here and cut it all up in front of you. But sitting here and, you know, killing it all, that, yeah, that would have, you know, just been a video itself, you know, killing 100 pieces of cloves of garlic for this salsa. Yeah, <laughs> that would have definitely been a video all by itself. Move these gloves out of the way. We're going to cut this like this for right now. You see, we get it all minced up a little bit. Might have too much there, but we're gonna cut it down anyway. Appreciate you all coming in and you know watching the video. I'm guessing that you like hot sauce and stuff, salsa like that too. You know, when I make another one of these videos, it'll be pretty quick. This right here just gives me time to, you know, run off the mouth while I'm cutting stuff. Now, I know it's really interesting for you to watch, you know. Switch that light glare right there. Try to get that light glare out of the way. Yeah, there you go. That's a little bit better. Okay. So... Uh, without the science again, it takes me about, I don't know, two months in the refrigerator to use it uh, for this to ferment to a point where I like it where it's nice and saucy and mixed and, you know what I mean, flavorable and, uh, you know, you can actually start using it. Uh, the longer, the longest I've had a jar it's probably, uh, yeah, 11 months. Okay. So it fermented for two months. And I had it, was it, uh, no, yep, I had it for a total of 11 months. So it fermented for two months, and I had it for nine months after that. And then I, you know, accidentally dropped it. But I was trying to keep it as long as I could to, so I could tell you in this video, or in one of my videos, how long that, you know, is good for it. But, you know, I, no matter what, uh, all, all the stuff that I make, like the salsa and the sauce, is refrigerated the whole time. Uh, during the fermenting process, I might pull it out for an hour in the room temperature, shake it up, and then refrigerate it and leave it refrigerated. And I might do that, like, maybe once a week or something like that. That way, you know what I mean, it gets a little, the process will speed up a little bit. But if you leave it out, uh, which I have not done yet, uh, I don't know what would happen. Uh, I left the jar out. I refrigerated a jar and pulled the jar out and, you know, being the fat guy I am, I used some of it. And, uh, you know, before it was done fermenting. And uh, I closed it up and left it on, on the counter. 
and you know I forgot about it. You know, I came back in, and the, the cap was uh, not blown off, but it was bubbled. You know, the lid on on a ball jar, ball mason jar, was bubbled. And you know I went to open it up to air it out, and it was like a volcano. So that'd be a good experiment, you know what I mean? Uh, another thing is don't fill the, whole, the jar the whole way up, because if you fill the jar the whole way up to the very top, then yeah, it'll it'll definitely uh, explode on you because it'll rise up to the top. I'm gonna take this rag and wipe this stuff off real quick. And then I'm gonna wash my hands. And then we're gonna start with the peppers. So a buddy of mine wants wants the, the seeds from these peppers so he can plant some. So I'm gonna save him the seeds and put them in a bag for him. So he's got a bunch of different seeds. But we're going to start, uh, we'll use that for, that's some minced garlic, like 60, yeah, about 60 cloves of garlic, Italian purple garlic. So we're going to put these gloves on. Now, you know, I got fat man hands, so trying to get these little surgical gloves on is kind of funny, especially doing it on a video. And yeah, I'm going to have to put two on just in case if I put a hole in this. That's the worst, too, you know what I mean? If you ever rub, you know, got done working with some peppers and then you rubbed your face thinking that, you know, forgetting that you worked with them or you wash your hands afterwards and you think that the sauce is gone and the juice is gone off your hands from the peppers and it's not, it's, it's just like getting pepper sprayed. So if you've never been pepper sprayed and you're gonna make some garlic salsa like this, uh, <laughs> don't touch your face. Fair warning, do not rub face after doing this. These gloves are really tight. That broke that one. So you gotta get rid of that one. Put this one. Thank you. I grab more than one pair. There we go. And I broke that one too. Let's see. Getting the gloves on. This is the hardest part right now. It's probably gonna be the hardest part of this whole video is getting this glove on. So this one here goes in there, this one here goes in there, this one here goes in there, this one here goes in there. Beautiful. Work it out. Get that on and then we'll pull this down. Sweet. Hey, hey. Got the second glove on. That's a beautiful thing. All right, now we're going to start cutting these peppers. Now, what I like to do is take off the top. All right. I don't like to use the seeds and Oh man, if you can smell this pepper right now, it just filled the whole air up with the juice of this pepper, man. So I like to cut the membrane out and take the seeds out and just have the pepper itself. I try to use a very little seeds. Don't like to use any seeds if I possibly can. <laughs> so we're just going to do this to a couple peppers and then you slice it down the back. If it will cut, yeah, there we go. Slice it down like that. 
spread it open and then we're just going to take the seeds out again these are ghost peppers extremely hot so if you're not familiar with peppers make sure that uh, you get familiar with peppers before you start using them these are uh, really close to scorpions or you might have heard of the popular uh, uh, Carolina Reapers and I'll be making a video with the Carolina Reapers soon I made another salsa with these already with ghost peppers and Carolina Reapers but I didn't do this and make the video so I apologize for that but we're gonna see how to make this stuff now Sir, try to get as many peppers out of pe you know, seeds out of there as possible. And this takes a little process too. It's not like it happens, you know, in five ten minutes because you gotta cut all this stuff up and you gotta be careful with the juice from the peppers and the seeds and the, you know, you don't want them to get everywhere and stuff like that. And anything that you use to mess with these peppers, make sure you wash thoroughly. Because, uh, you know, if I don't wash this cutting board, you know, pr correctly and I make something else on it, it's going to be extremely hot. It's going to be extremely spicy and extremely hot. So make sure that you get, you know, you wash your utensils, the knife, and anything that these peppers touch. Besides the inside of the bowls, even the inside of the bowls, you want to make sure you wash all your dishes very, very thoroughly. Because you'd be eating something else out of the bowl that I put these peppers in, and then, wow, <laughs> yeah, it'd be really hot. So, I'm taking all these seeds out. Now, you can keep the membrane in, or you can keep the membrane out, but you know, the membrane is this stuff right here that's inside the pepper, uh, just so you, if you don't know. And uh, you can keep it, and it'd make the dish. Or whatever you're making more flavorable however it will still be super hot so we're going to take as many of these seeds off here as possible we're just going to throw that there for now we're just going to throw all this stuff right there for now and then we'll get him the seeds after we're done with this video i'm going to cut all this stuff up first okay so now we're into the peppers we're going to cut up the peppers And again, you want to make it small too because the smaller that you cut it up, the better uh, and the faster that it will ferment. Now, I don't recommend you doing this any other way but with a knife uh, because, you know, the processors and machine cuts and stuff like that, it, for some reason, it just seems like it makes it different. So I like to cut everything up by hand, even though it does take longer. But I still like to cut everything up by hand. I don't like using blenders or food processors or anything like that. Uh, definitely cut it up by hand first and then see where you're at. And then you can try cutting it up with, you know, with a, a processor or a machine or something like that. But every time you seem like to use the machine, it seems like some, you lose more of the oils of the, the food that you're you know, using the machine for, like the peppers or the garlic and stuff like that. At least that's been my experience. And if you experience something else, you can make a comment in this video, you know, in the comment section, and we could have that discussion. But for me personally, I, I like using the knife and like doing it by hand. And I think that we get more flavor. Sorry about that, it's bouncing on stuff. Uh, more flavor by cutting it by hand than we do with my machine. And you can see, and I'm going to show you what this pepper looks like right here that I'm cutting. I'll give you an up close and personal after I'm done cutting it. And then you can see how fine that you can actually get it you know, with a knife. I mean, it's just like a processor, you know what I mean? See? 
focus. And I don't know if you can see that or not, but it's super, super fun. And that's what you want. You want it super fine that way. Whenever, whenever it's fermenting, it don't take as long to ferment. I'm gonna put them in a the heart. It's red, so heart and red. Oh, and we have another ghost pepper right here that is orange. It is not quite ripe. However, it will still do the job. And we're gonna cut it up too and put it in the mix with the rest of these. Because we only have so many. I'm going to cut this stuff out of here. And sometimes when you cut open a pepper, it might be discolored. So either, you know, it's your choice. You can either cut the uh, discoloring out of the pepper. Or you could just discard the pepper. Whatever you want to do. Either way, it would be fine, depending on how discolored it is. The only thing I smell is hot peppers. You gotta like, you gotta like hot peppers too. You gotta like them. So I take the seeds out and the membrane out because uh, you know, some foods don't like to be eaten. And hot peppers is a, a plant that don't like to be eaten. So the pepper will affect you and it'll be hot. But what really gets you and is everlasting and that causes more problems health-wise, again, I'm not a doctor, so the glove makes may, may make you look like it, but I am not a doctor, so I can't tell you, you know what I mean, the specifics. All I can tell you is what I uh, believe and uh, what I've experienced. So I like fresh hot peppers because uh, the peppers themselves don't mess with you or don't mess with me uh, as much as the seeds. Seeds uh, tend to stick to you, the inside of you, longer uh, than what you, you might want. So seeds are, uh, you know, good in a mix or, you know, maybe using for some seasoning or something like that, but... I prefer not to use the seeds, and I prefer not to have uh, dry peppers. I prefer to use fresh peppers. Uh, it makes a difference between fresh peppers and uh, uh, the intensity of the heat between fresh peppers and dry peppers and peppers with seeds compared to peppers without seeds. The seeds tend to stick around longer than what you may want and you know it might yeah it'll stick the seeds will stick around longer than what you would want so i don't use seeds and i don't like to use dried peppers i've eaten dried peppers but when you dry peppers then the seeds are in the pepper uh, if you do some research, you can find out for yourself uh, what the effects of seeds, hot pepper seeds, and regular hot peppers without seeds affect you. Yeah, we're just going to grab all of these and cut up all of these. Set them one at a time. I'm speed this up a little bit. Got two more peppers to get done. Sorry about the banging on that. So any of you cooks out there, man, if you ever made anything like this before, uh, you know, you got a video, link it uh, in the comments. Uh, if you seen somebody's making something like this before, uh, please also link that in the comments. I'll be interested in seeing how other people do this. Uh, I have not met anybody that does this quite like I do it. I met other people who do sauces and stuff, but their process is totally different than mine. Not saying that there's right or wrong, the saying their process is different than mine. And I haven't seen anybody that has, you know, used the same process as I have to make my salsa or sauce. So 
so I'd be just interested to, you know, share, uh, you know, some secrets, uh, how to make some stuff, and what works best. Again, I've been doing this for three years, so I like a different combination of peppers that, this is actually the first time I'm using this combination of peppers, uh, so it's kind of new, and it's the first time I'm doing a video uh, live, so on this making these peppers and this salsa so it's kind of new uh, I have other combination of peppers that I know how they come out and how the salsa and the sauce comes out so I mean there's stuff like heavy garlic or you know super super hot or some sweet and, and some others like uh, instant burn and then there's some that you know what I mean I, I've made that have a, a creeper burn like it takes like a minute or two, you, you know, by the time you take your third or fourth bite, then, then it hits you, you know. So I got different combinations of different sauces and salsas, you know. So if you have something to share, I will share another one of those with you. Just put the link uh, in comments, uh, in the comment of this video, and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Uh, might not be immediately, but I'll get back to you as soon as I possibly can. I'll answer all questions and anything like that as well. So yeah, this takes a timely process. And I apologize for how long it's taken, but we are gonna get it done. Okay. Got a couple more ghost peppers. That I had a baby pepper in it. That's it. That's a little baby pepper. Now that is really, really hot. Don't know if you can see that. We're going to put that baby pepper right there. We're going to cut that one up too. And yeah, we're going to put that in the mix. So when a pepper has a pepper in it, you know it's hot. Okay, this is the last ghost pepper right here. Clean these seeds out. And then we can start working on the habaneros or the Trinidad's. I think we'll go with the habaneros first and save the hottest for the last. We'll go with the Trinidad's last. All right, cool. Sorry about that again. We gotta get this baby one too, my baby. Gotta be careful with that one. This is a little baby. Throw that in this. Cut that up real good. My bad about that. Cut that up real good. Dice it up real good. It's like a puree. Yeah, that's good. So I'm gonna throw this in the bowl. Get rid of these seeds. I'm gonna put this bowl right here so you can see the bowl. Just a little garlic in the bowl. Yep, oh, wait. So we got one that got away. This is the last ghost pepper. I'm not gonna touch that with my hand and be stupid. Okay, cut this open. And take out the seeds. Get rid of the seeds. 
These are habaneros. So compared to the ghost peppers that I just cut up, habaneros are less hot. And uh, the these colored ones are even, they're sweet. They're not really that hot. And as you can see, there's uh, some peppers don't have that many seeds. Other peppers will have a lot. Like this one will have a lot. So we're just gonna cut that right down the middle. Scoop that out. Try to get the whole membrane out as well. Again, I don't like using seeds in my in my salsa or in my mix. I mean if I eat a whole pepper, I eat a whole pepper, you know what I mean? But I try not to not to do stuff like that. Uh, I have, I will, and I will again, you know what I mean? But uh, I try to try to stay away from the seeds. Uh, like you can smell, like if you smell hot peppers, you know what I'm about to say. Like uh, it's definitely uh, you can smell the heat. Some you know you can smell like that's really 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 hot, and then others you can smell and you be like, oh, that smells hot, but it smells sweet, you know. So these ones right here are hot and sweet. So this will make a, a nice mix with the ghost peppers and the Trinidad scorpions and the garlic. I can't wait. That's the only thing that sucks too about this. You know, it's taking about uh, a half hour, so almost 40 minutes to get to the second pepper. And see, this one's discolored, so I'm not going to use this one at all. And we're just going to get rid of that stuff right there right now. So again, you know, if it's discolored, you don't have to use it. And there's two of them. And that happens a lot too because, you know, you've got a whole plant and you pick 20 peppers off the plant. Not all of them are going to be good. You know, some apples are bad. So you just, you know, cut it open. If it's discolored, just get rid of it. Move on, go to the next pepper. Hopefully it's not the only pepper that you got. Now see this one with so many habaneros and so many sweet habaneros. I think this one's gonna and so much garlic. This one's definitely gonna be uh, these two jars I'm making is definitely gonna be super sweet. Which is good. Because it's still gonna be hot. <laughs> don't let the don't let the sweetness fool you. It will still be hot. Yeah, it takes a little bit of time so you're not fooled whenever you know you're trying to cut up like 40, 50 peppers and 60 things of garlic. <laughs> it takes some time to cut everything up. Even if you're a professional or have experience with uh, cutting peppers and garlic or using a knife or anything like that, it does still take a while for this process. So... Don't be fooled if you're going to get into this. It's not going to take five minutes. I mean, maybe if you only have like 10 peppers. But, I mean, it's really not worth it if you're going to just, you know, not devote the time into doing it. It just makes it even better whenever you get it. And you, uh, you know, open up the fridge and grab the jar of salsa or the sauce if you made the sauce. And, uh, yeah, it makes it worth, so much worth it. You know what I mean? And then to share it with other people that like that kind of stuff, you know what I mean? And then see people's reactions. I've got all kind of reactions, you know what I mean, to stuff like this. And the majority of the time, everybody loves it, you know. But again, this would be the first time for that mix. That was a bad pepper, too. So about, you know, almost 20 peppers here for the jalap ha uh, habaneros. And I've gotten probably like three or four. <coughs> Excuse me three or four discolored peppers. 
which is not bad. That's, you know, that's pretty good. Uh, I had almost as many ghost peppers, and I didn't have any of them, so that was, that was really good. You know, I was really surprised by that, too, so, and happy. <laughs> Always happy you get good peppers. See, so yeah, maybe four peppers, five peppers. Again, it's not too bad, but it's pretty good. Pretty good ratio. If you deal with peppers, you know what I'm talking about, you know. Especially dealing with hot peppers. It's definitely really, really good process to do it all by hand. And, you know, by the time you, ex you know, experience uh, the peppers themselves and the mix and when it ferments and stuff, you'd be really happy with it. So, yeah, this is definitely worth, worth making if you like to make it. If not, you know I mean, you can just hit me up, you know what I mean? Uh, obviously, this takes a while to do this, and, you know, the peppers cost money. And garlic, yeah, definitely garlic does come cost some money, too. So, if you might want a jar or something like this, you just let me know. Hit me up on the comments, or, you know, Facebook, or Twitter, or whatever. I want to tweet this video, too. So, you know, everybody in the, in the, on Twitter, follows me on Twitter to see the video. Again, this is the first time that, uh, not the first time that I made the video, but this is the first time that it is aired anywhere. So, uh, I made a video of this a year or two ago, uh, but it was in the process of being edited and I lost the laptop, so I got to hunt that video down. Again, and you can see the same process, but with different peppers and a different combinations. Again, you want to make it as super fine as possible. The smaller that you make it, the better, uh, the easier that they will interact with each other and the garlic. And the better, uh, faster that it will mix. So I always give it two months no matter what. Uh, but you don't have really have to. You make it really fine. You I mean maybe a month, month and a half, about five, six weeks. You'll you'll see a huge difference from the jar. Uh, you know what I mean? And I'll show you a jar that I got in the fridge now. At the end of this video, once I jar this stuff, that way you can see you know, what it looks like fresh in the jar and what it looks like that it's been sitting in the refrigerator for about two weeks. Yeah, and then, you know, I'll make another video. I'm cutting up some more of this stuff. And then I'll show those other jars uh, in the next video as well. That way you can get a little uh, understanding of what it looks like when it ferments. Because a lot of people don't understand what it ferments or misunderstands uh, formation, uh, formation. Not inflammation, but... <laughs> the fermenting of food. You know what I mean? People just don't understand that sometimes. So, uh, I'm not saying that you don't, but you know what I mean? You have to check it out if you don't, look it up. Uh, pretty much it's just, you know, aging. It's like wine, you know how wine ages? That's pretty much what I'm doing with my peppers and my salsa, is, and my garlic and my sauce. Uh, I'm letting it age. And uh, I believe it's better it's just like wine. This is just like wine, baby. I'm going to tell you that right now. This is just like wine. It, it comes better of age. Definitely better of age. Hey, we're almost done with these habaneros. That was pretty quick, huh? Getting faster as we go in here. But, yeah. We're going to add one more thing to this, and that's a little hidden secret that I'm not going to show you until I'm done cutting up these uh, scorpions. But yeah, we're going to add something else to the mix. Okay. Got another pepper right here. Okay, boom. 
Okay, now you see that? See that? It, mix that up a little bit. You're just going to mix this up a little bit right now just because uh, there's a lot of stuff in here. And we want to mix it up a little bit. That way we get a good uh, mix when we throw in the other peppers and the secret ingredient. Okay, time for Trinidad Scorpions. These babies are super, super hot. Super, super hot. On a scale, I think the Trinidads are the third or fourth hottest pepper in the world. I'm not sure you'd have to, you know, tell me that the scale has changed so much. That in every strand, you know what I mean, has different velocity of heat. So we're gonna cut this in half. And yeah, these ones don't have that many peppers in or seeds in it as either. So uh, yeah, I think the hotter. Correct me if I'm wrong. You can put a comment in the in the comments. But the hotter the pepper, the less the seeds. Pretty sure that's how that goes. Uh, I'm not sure, but that's some of my experience has been like that. We'll see. You know, one of these bigger ones. Yeah, not that many seeds. And wow, if you can smell these right here. Mmm. Not crying, but that's just because I'm used to it. But uh, if somebody was standing right here and you could smell these, man, you would definitely know these are hot. You could smell it. Mm -mm -mm. I can't wait. Two months now. Two months is a long time for this. But it's so worth it. You know what I mean? You just throw it in the fridge and forget about it. You got a cooler, that would be even better. Or you got, you know what I mean, a kitchen space. Yeah, definitely be better. You just make sure that you, you know, get all the seeds out of there. Again, you know, I guess I'll repeat this. You know, I'll probably repeat this a couple times. Probably already have repeated this a couple times. But uh, I don't like using seeds in my in my uh, cooking whenever I use uh, hot peppers because uh, seeds tend to stick. Uh, plants don't like to be eaten. And the defense that the hot pepper got is these bad boys right here. Is the membrane and the seeds. Yep. So once you get them, you might not ever eat pepper again. But you just eat the pepper. Yeah, it's hot, but my experience is it don't affect you as much as the seeds do. So if you just eat the whole pepper like it is, you know, just pick it up, oh, yeah, there's hot pepper, and you eat it. Uh, just be wise to know that the seeds <laughs> are the hottest part of the pepper. Seeds in the membrane. And, you know, seeds are like, you know, cause other issues uh, as well. So that's why, one of the main reasons why I don't like using seeds, and if I get, it's almost impossible to get every single seed out of it, but if you can, or you know what I mean I would and I try to get every single possible seed I can out of the mix uh, the less seeds the better I'll leave some membrane in it because you can't get all the membrane out no matter what so see how small that one was I should have showed it to you before I just cut it up but yep get all these seeds out of here I'm going to take these off and put them over here Get them out the way. And then we're gonna cut this up right here. Oh yeah. And again, whenever you're done uh, cutting hot peppers and stuff like that, make sure you wash your cutting board and your knife, and especially your hands, very very well, because uh, I, I, how do I say it? It's a uh, the pepper juice is hot, so it'll bite into stuff. You know what I mean? It don't like bite you, but that's just the terminology 
but it'll it's like you know paint you know what I mean paint uh, on the wall you know if it bites that means it sticks well you know what I mean but it pepper juice will definitely bite into you know the the car or the, uh, the cutting board and you, you just rinse it off and stuff that's not gonna be good anything else that you put on here is that you need to clean it clean it well clean it with really hot water maybe use some bleach and you know maybe clean it more than once because it is very 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 hot and you don't want to put anything else on this cutting board until you wash it very well because the juice is hot and it will bite into anything that you put on this so if you cut up an orange and eat that orange you will have a very hot orange just so you know same thing with the knife you want to make sure that you cut you know wash the knife up pretty good and make sure you wash your hands and that's why i'm using two gloves because this juice on this pepper is very 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 hot i'm not using a glove on this hand because i'm not touching anything and i'm just cutting and being very cautious of making sure that I don't touch anything with that hand and I'm still going to wash my hands thoroughly and and yeah more than once and even with bleach and I'm going to wash the dishes because you know I have experienced that myself where I've touched my face after doing <laughs> cutting up ghost peppers and Trinidad's and yeah it is not a very good experience so make sure you wash your hands and all utensils very, very well. And even your dishcloth, when you're done washing everything down, make sure you put your dishcloth in the dirty laundry and you wash it as well. This, it is no joke, these peppers are extremely hot and the juice from them are, is extremely hot and it will bite into everything and anything that it touches comes into contact with and it will stay there until you wash it off so be very very careful whenever you're messing around with very hot hot peppers this is what they make pepper spray with so you know you would I would touch somebody's hand with this right now they would have to wash their hand thoroughly <laughs> before touching anything if not then they will have a very bad day and yeah it'll be very 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 hot so please use caution when you're messing around with hot peppers when you're cooking with hot peppers when you're making salsa with hot peppers anything you're doing with hot peppers please be careful and make sure you wash your hands thoroughly after using them okay this is the last pepper right there cut this baby up I'm gonna dice this up right here. Again, this is the la this is my last Trinidad scorpion hot pepper, which I believe is the third or fourth hottest pepper. Uh, I'll look it up and put a link in the, in the comment section or in the description section of this video, so you can see you know the the heat velocity of each pepper. And we're just gonna. We're gonna get a spoon and cut that up, but I gotta grab the secret ingredient. Don't go nowhere. I'm not going far. Now I gotta be careful how I open this bag because I still got this glove on. I don't want to touch it with the glove. Okay. And let's see, we're gonna use. Bang! Do you know what that is? I'll give you a second, look at it, you tell me what that is. That's right. I don't know how you guessed it, but that is garlic scapes. When you're growing garlic, that comes out of the ground when the garlic closed and the and the blossom is still in the ground only for long neck garlic though hard neck 
Soft necks don't have skips. So the Italian purple uh, is a uh, is a hard neck garlic. So it does have scapes like these. So we're just gonna take one by one and just cut the ends off. Yeah, if you let them them grow, they'll just grow into a, a flower and you won't be able to get the garlic. So it would change, you know what I mean, the whole thing, the whole process of the garlic from into a flower, which is pretty cool. I never knew that, so there's a lot about garlic that you know I, mean? I just learned. And I, well, I've used cakes for a while. They're kind of like, uh, like the onion family. It is a part of the onion family. They're both part of the same family, but I like the garlic scapes more than I like scallions. Especially whenever you're cooking. Uh, you know, nice garnish. You know, the garlic scapes is good. Uh, so it says onions, you know what I mean? But I like the garlic scapes. So I only use these in... Uh, Two of my sauces, and this is the second salsa that I'm using, it. and I'll show you the jar of the first one because that I was, was mentioned earlier that I will show you as soon as I'm done cutting this up, so you can see what it looks like in a jar after a couple weeks. Yeah, just to tell you, this stuff is hot. Not the garlic scapes. The garlic scapes are not hot. But we're going to cut them down a little bit more. See someone flying all over the place. Oh yeah, these peppers are hot. Cut it all down. Cut them all down. Scoop them all up. Throw them all in. Now I'm going to use a whole pack of garlic scapes. Not just because it's good color, but uh, it's good flavor. Now, scapes, you can just eat like this. You can cut it up and put it in your salad. You could, uh, you know, cut it up and dice them up and uh, saute with them. It's the same thing as, uh, you know, onion scapes or scallions, I'm sorry. You do the same thing with onions, as, uh, scallions, as you do with garlic scapes. Uh, I just like to use garlic scapes more, more so because of the flavor, and it's garlic, and yeah, it's to me it's better than onions, scallions. Uh, you know, you go to a farmer's market and get scapes too. Uh, almost anybody that grows hard neck garlic, you get garlic scapes from. But they're only in season for a short period of time. So if you buy it in bulk, or you buy something that you're not going to use uh, right away, uh, you cut up, probably like in a size like that, like an inch or so, and then you can freeze them, portion it and freeze it. Or you can cut it up like I'm doing right now, and freeze it, or freeze dry it. A lot of people uh, freeze, cut it up like this and freeze dry it, and then they sprinkle it on their food, you know what I mean, like scapes or you know, seasoning, which is really good and really healthy. Come on, cut this better.
this is a secret ingredient right here. Again, this is the first season that I've used this in my salsa and sauce. So I haven't used this yet in my salsa or sauce, but I've used these in many other dishes and just eating them raw uh, and you know saute them, put them in salads, cut them up, put them on sandwiches, like however you want to do it. They're good. They're really good. Okay, that should be good enough for right now. I'll stir that in there. Stir that in there. Okay, now we're gonna get a spoon real quick and mix this up. Can you see it? Let me fix this camera so you can see it. There you go. Yeah, mix this up pretty good. You wanna make sure that you mix it up pretty good. And that way you get, you know, some of all the peppers in the mix. You know what I mean? Because you're about to jar it and this won't fit in one jar. Uh, maybe two, but you want, you know, garlic and you want a consistency of it, you know what I mean? So you want to make sure that it's all in there and you mix it all up really good. And there we go. And that's a, that's a lot of salsa right there, but it's not done. See that you can smell it, you know what I mean? And it, do not, I uh, repeat, do not make this or anything like this and put it in plastic. The heat from the peppers will bite into the plastic. You need to use jars for anything hot because the, the juices will bite into whatever it, it, it is put in. Uh, it cannot bite into glass. That's why you need to use glass jars. It will bite into the plastic of any plastic container. So don't use plastic. You want to use ball jars like this or something similar you know, that has the, the caps. So you want to use a jar of glass. And now we're going to throw it is in here. We might need a third jar. Not sure, but we're gonna find out. Uh, we might get it done with two. But again, you want to leave like some space from the top of the jar. You don't want to. You don't want to pack it down in the jars. Uh, you know, maybe after it ferments, you could add you know a jar or two together, but not before because it will rise to the top of the jar. And then you have a problem. So hey, we're just gonna put that jar right there. Oh, I still got a lot of that. Let's see, uh, I might have to go grab another jar. Put the rest of this in another jar. But that's fine, that don't matter, I got another jar. Oh yeah, smell that already. Oh yeah, perfect. Yep, it'll be perfect. Two jars. Wow. Like four or five more peppers, man. That would have been would have been done when I've been able to use it in, in two jars. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. Now we're gonna get this stuff out the way. 
put this to the side. All right. This right here is a jar that I made before. It's been in for a couple weeks. I don't know if you really see that or not. You can see, you know, how kind of liquefied it is a little bit. So, I'm gonna shake it up a little bit. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah. So yeah, this has been in, in the refrigerator for a couple weeks. See, it's starting to ferment pretty good. See, like right there. Now, there you go. this is the jar that I just made. So you can see a difference. Put them side by side so you can really see it. Yeah. This has been in the fridge for a couple weeks. This is just made. So. This is going to liquefy more, and then this is going to start looking like this in a couple weeks. So, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, hope you learned how to, some stuff about peppers that you might not have known. Uh, so, we're just going to take a little bit of this and try it out see that uh, uh, yeah that's a that's a lot that's good but it's very 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 don't try this at home only if you are experienced with hot peppers you can eat hot peppers like this hey See you in a couple weeks. I'll make another jar. And I'll show you the, the jars that I just showed you, the ones I had refrigerated, and the ones that I just made. Oh, that's a little hot. See you later, man.